So we're a little bit like we're six minutes over time, but we will try to keep uh, uh, to keep the timing. Hello, Smista, how are you? Hello, hi, I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much. I invite you to share your slides with us, All right, and explain you know, your vision for digital transformation at Amadeus. Thank you. Okay, um, I hope you can see the screen and hear me well. Yes, that's perfect. All right, so let's get started. Uh, today, I'm very happy to share with all of you um, uh, on this topic that is unlocking the strategic value of APIs in digital transformation. Now, this topic is very close to my heart. Um, I have been studying digital transformation for a while. And um, as these days pass by, I'm noticing that digital transformation is going to take the world by storm, especially in the upcoming decade. So just a little bit of introduction. I'm Smita Gopinath. I'm a senior manager development at Amidius. Uh, I'm currently located in Bangalore, India. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you. Thank you for having me. And uh, today I would like to share a story about how APIs will become the strategic enabler for digital transformation. Uh, they already are, but uh, you know, given the current circumstances, given the pandemic that we are all fighting and the way things are changing and the new normal that we are all having to face, this is going to be more and more prominent as we move forward. So um, I'm going to let this quote sink in for a second. Um, here, there is a talk about at least 40% of the businesses that will die in the next 10 years. Um, I would say in, in the year 2020, many of the businesses stood at a threshold of do or die. Um, with, with the pandemic, as I called out, uh, things rapidly changed. And those companies which were not ready for the future um, had to cut cut losses, had to sink down, and those who were already floating managed somehow to survive. But if there is one lesson we can take back from this, it is that we'll have to keep being future ready, anticipating things that are not the norm, and believing that that might come anytime, and be ready to accommodate newer technologies, and be ready to serve the customers. Now, first things first, um, when I talked about digital transformation, what is digital transformation? Basically, it's adaptation of the newer emerging transformative digital technologies uh, that can transform an enterprise's services and business, uh, you know, all the products that are built using the latest and the greatest technologies. Um, today, we see that many companies are still in the legacy mode. There are a lot of manual processes. There are not a lot of non-digital assets as well. And there are a lot of older digital technologies, uh, which means that if we are going to face a crucial time going forward, then we will be in a crisis mode. So digital transformation becomes an important strategy for every company. Um, and I would say this is just not top bottom. Uh, it has to be bottom up and middle out as well. Every single person in, in an organization should put on their thinking hats and start focusing on how do we enable digital transformation in the little things that we are handling ourselves. So I would call out that digital transformation is the new order. Now, what is customer centricity? Customer centricity is having a customer first mindset. It, it is about putting customers first. Um, the customer needs are no longer binary. Gone are the days when there was a product that was built that could cater to a mass set of people and people were okay to buy the product. Today, is, it is the era of personalization. It is the era of customer wanting something very specific, very customized to themselves. Now, in order to increase the reach to these customers, in order for the enterprises to increase their own revenue and profitability, in order to kind of uh, put customer defined value proposition as a key strategic differentiator uh, for their own enterprises, we have to start leveraging digital transformation. We have to start focusing more and more on the customers. Customer pro proximity will become very, very important. And it is not just converting. It is just not like selling a product and then, you know, just be done with it. It is about constantly keeping in touch with the customer, uh, staying close to them, trying and understanding without even expecting that, you know, the next sale will go forward. But the customers expect that, you know, that sort of a proximity and intimacy is maintained. Now, this is the customer centric mindset where, you know, we are able to provide unique and valuable offerings to meet various needs of the customer. And customer centricity is the new norm. Um, I'm sure you all would agree, uh, at least in this year, customer centricity has been everything. Uh, given all the scare around every business that we try to interact with, we want to make sure that they are catering to us as customers than anything else. 
And now with this, actually, this this um, you know data that I am showing becomes very relevant, right? Um, already, it was predicted that by 2020, customer experience will overtake price and product uh, as a key uh, you know brand differentiator. And I think it also happened for a lot more other reasons. Um, at the point when they published the statistics, um, it was that 86% of the buyers will play will pay more for a better customer experience. I think today this number has gone up. Uh, many people are okay to spend an extra few bucks uh, if at all they are getting a better you know experience. Now these two terms, digital transformation and customer centricity, are very very key for this times and for the future to come. So I pronounce these two as the key strategic influencer of the upcoming decade. And we will see how. Now, what does it mean, a confluence of both this customer-centric mindset and the digital transformation strategy, right? Um, it We need this uh, to increase the speed and ag agility with which we are serving the customers, how we are responding to the changing needs, and how we can quickly recover from a state of flux. It is also required to become more and more data driven. Um, we need to have customer obsessive strategies and we cannot do that unless we have data, unless we know everything about them. And of course, in order to embrace, um, you know, uh, emerging technologies, uh, you, you all know today is the world of AI and ML and this is getting disrupted as we speak. There is blockchain, there is IoT, so many new things coming up and we need to kind of start thinking how do we build next generation products that caters to every new normal that we might anticipate coming forward. Now, keeping this in the background, let's see how does API fit into this scheme, right? Um, so I'm not going to spend much time on the basics, but what are APIs? Um, you know, APIs uh, are a set of specifications or routines. Um, you know, they are used as an interface for software uh, components to communicate with each other. Now, um, you know, APIs um, securely share data, they securely share all the assets across a platform, they are very seamless, there is easy connectivity, and they shield everything that happens in the back uh, backend, uh, you know, and also they cover up all the underlying complexities. And of course, APIs help enterprise share the data, the systems, they help collaborate, uh, they share, uh, you know, all the interactions, etc. across partners, suppliers, you know, customers, developers, and so on. So, I think all of you here know what are the benefits of API. Um, you know, one of the key benefits that I would like to call out is the way API helps us enable new digital products. And that that would persist, you know, along the theme of this presentation. Of course, uh, increased agility and reduced time to market, um, opening up new opportunities, enhancing customer experiences and generating revenue and, you know, increasing the monetization. But what is very important and what I would like to call out is API is going to enable us to prepare for the future, known and unknown as well. And if we know to unlock the strategy of APIs, we will be in a better position to do so. So APIs are the essential building blocks of digital transformation. Now let's come to the crux of the presentation. Um, how do we unlock the strategic value of APIs? How does it enable digital transformation and customer centricity? Now, these are the three themes, uh, you know, which is very, very crucial um, in order to kind of develop an API first approach or in, in order to kind of put API in the middle of all the strategic um, planning that is done in order to make it a vital, um, you know, an essential part of the business growth. Uh, we need to look at these three broad themes. One is the API economy. Today, API economy is everywhere. It is a very important driver. Um, many, many digital initiatives are influenced by the way API economy is shaping up. And APIs are helping businesses to become more competitive. Um, many new business models are getting invented, reinvented, uh, and API economy is making way for these. Um, then the second one is an API-driven strategy within every enterprise and not to look at API as something as an addendum, uh, you know, building products in a status quo approach um, and, you know, trying to see if we can also sort of build an API around it. Gone are the days that we do it. Today, we need to have an API-driven strategy at the central, at the core of every, uh, you know, objective that we are building within an enterprise. So this will be at the intersection of data. It will be at the intersection of customer journeys, the connected experiences, distribution channels, partnerships, collaborations, and so on. And lastly, um, an API-empowered software ecosystem. Uh, like I called out before, we have a lot of transformative and emerging technologies coming up. And for all of these technologies to make place, 
within our product landscape for us to build something around this for us to be ready for the next generation product development it is very very important that you know we start building software ecosystems we start building business platforms that are api that are empowered by apis now let's take the first theme um so api economy as i called out is a strategic driver to many of the digital initiatives uh, basically uh, you know uh, with with the proliferation of api economy in several sectors not just in the tech company but today we see it in almost every industries it is helping businesses become more competitive helping with modernization it's helping support new type of business models now if you are somebody who has already tweeted um, and if you have posted on social media if you made digital payments if you have access travel itineraries online or on your app um you know if you have if you're playing online if you made some bookings and so many other stuff which i'm sure all of you here have done at some point in time or the other then you're already living in an api economy it is a very fast consumption sort of a um, area uh, there are various kind of apis around the clock that you're consuming without even realizing that you're doing it but this api economy is driving a whole sort of thing that you look around whether it is social sector whether you're um, uh, looking at your uh, you know personal lives professional lives you know business lives everything api economy is today meeting the demand for innovation for newer business models for engagement and agility uh, thereby it is also helping enterprises increase their competitiveness now today if you see the statistics about uh, 5 billion people are active internet users as of october 2020 and this encompasses about 59% of the global population and i am sure that this number is only going to increase and there will be more and more demand for better experiences better products better services um it is anticipated that there will be 90% of the projected world population who will be using internet uh, you know by 2030 now if we have to be ready if we have to be ready for the next decade and if we have to cater to this entire population um and kind of build something that is relevant that is meaningful for them then api economy is where we have to invest that is where we have to put our focus on now let me uh, take an example of oral b uh, oral b uh, the toothbrush company came up with you know fancy bluetooth connected toothbrush uh, you know they started having you know this idea of creating a dental care journey and so on and so forth they started offering a lot of apis and sdks and they started uh, you know um, inviting even developers to come and build certain apps and games so that you know oral care was not just treated as something which was not reachable but people could actually uh, focus on you know some goals saying that you know i will brush twice a day or after every meal and you know give the data back to oral b so that oral b can keep recommending better and better uh, guidance provide more um, you know advice even if they needed some professional uh, insights you know they will be happy to provide those scientific data in fact uh, there were there's another uh, toothbrush company i forget the name right now but uh, they also started uh, feeding back the information um, about the users dental care uh, to the insurance company basis which the insurance coverage would be uh, you know made more flexible to the customer so they would reduce the premium if you're being a very good um, you know user you're brushing you know after every meal and you're kind of doing all the due diligence everything is recorded so they adjust your premiums based on that so if you see largely the way you know a dental insurance will be dealt with the way a dentist office is going to work going forward and how people are going to go and approach you know dental health care is going to be largely transformed than what it was in the traditional days if you look at ford ford also has this ford connected vehicle apis which allows developers to integrate remotely with you know the ford and lincoln um, you know vehicles and uh, they have enabled the developers to kind of uh, connect drivers whenever you know the drivers are kind of um, using uh, the vehicle in certain situations um they can also sort of access the vehicle remotely and create certain experiences for people um there is also this shift right in the next decade as we are talking about looking at 2030 people no longer just want a vehicle they want an experience they want you know more than just you know to own a product that is a physical material product they also want the a uh, subjective experience that you know they want to relish and this can be only provided if we are opening up technologies if vehicles are connected and if it is very easy for the developers to integrate with the 
drivers with the customers and see how they can kind of provide that innovation and make it better and better for them. I think IoT and other things will also become very significant in the automotive industry. So API economy is there and it is going to only become more and more important. Coming to the second theme. Uh, so the second theme is API driven strategy. Um, now this will be, as I called out, an intersection between data, customer journeys, connected experience, business models and distribution channels and so on. Now, um, API driven strategy is important for those if you are obsessed about customer journeys, if you absolutely love seamless connected experiences, if you want to tap into newer opportunities rapidly and not wait for years to kind of you know, bring to market something new, if you want to deliver business value at scale, you want to provide accurate, timely and relevant data in making business decisions, then you know, API driven strategy is something that must be em embraced. Now, this strategy largely depends on the enterprises becoming more and more data oriented collecting data real time and also deriving meaningful insights out of them in a timely manner and drive transformation. So when you create an API strategy, it adds value in many dimensions. It helps you build newer and better functionality. You can gain efficiencies via secure data management. Um, you can definitely decrease operating costs and uh, reusability of components will increase and thereby you don't have to build products which are logged in for certain type of usage and you can't extend the functionality. With, with this strategy, you can sort of reuse components, you can reuse modules and make it more and more um, you know, valuable. So data-driven approach with a stronger value propos proposition and a growth plan is what you get uh, when you kind of apply APS strategy to all your development um, objectives. Um, now, APIs have become so essential to businesses that 85% of people consider web APIs and API-based integration very, very fundamental to their business strategy. And I'm sure 85 will very soon be 100% of the people as we all start seeing how important and relevant APIs are. Now, if you look, you know, how data was kind of, um, you know, a data-centric approach was kind of used. Uh, let's take an example of the retailer, uh, Lane Crawford, I think this is based out of China. Uh, they very recently started building, uh, you know, their digital presence, mobile app, and so on and so forth. But they ended up creating a data as a service platform. And this helped them collect the golden record of a customer, the 360 degree view of a customer, as well as the inventory. And they were able to do a very good match of these two and provide a lot of meaningful and relevant experiences to the customers. Apart from that, they were able to have up to date, you know, details on the purchase trends, on, on the loyalty, the way people are, you know, shopping, the historicals, um, and also making sure that, you know, they're able to understand and anticipate and predict what the customer would like to have and thereby personalize their experience. So they have set up an innovation team and they have a repository of APIs uh, to enable and maximize their own IT asset reuse. Uh, they're also looking at adding other capabilities like WeChat is one of their popular chat um, you know, application and they're planning to integrate it. And I'm sure they will integrate it with many other third party services. Um, so this is one example. If you see how you know um, they are using APIs to sort of um, build a whole lot of a strategic retail you know, oriented um, um, you know, goal for their customers and how they want to kind of provide the service to their customers. The second case study, I would like to pr proudly kind of offer what we do at Amadeus. Amadeus also has a very rich set of APIs. We have travel APIs that provide you the, uh, with the richest information in the travel industry. I welcome you all to go to developers.amadeus.com and explore. Uh, there is a lot of self-service and enterprise APIs. Um, of course, you can try your hand at building your own travel ecosystems uh, you, you know, that cater to search, book, and pay. I have listed some of the APIs. I'll share this presentation later. You can click through the link and you know you can sort of try your hand at you know going through one of these functionalities or all of them. Um, so coming to the third theme, uh, we have uh, what is called as an API empowered software ecosystem. Uh, this is going to sort of bring all the transformative technologies, the emerging trends uh, that are in the world of AI, ML, uh, data analytics, data science, blockchain, IoT, cloud, etc. Um, and also help us sort of build platforms and ecosystems that are highly automated, they're highly secure, highly, uh, you know, engaging with uh, insightful and meaningful data, uh, you know, that helps us build 
a product which is very very intelligent and uh, helps us uh, you know look at customers in more than one aspect that we today have begun to you know start uh, we have begun to understand customers in only one or two aspects today it will help us look beyond that now when you talk about api empowered software ecosystems then it means that you are somebody who would like to digitize everything become 100% online and remove all offline presence um there are many many uh, uh industries retail insurance banking all of them are just going 100% digital and i know that in 2020 many bus businesses have also taken that decision uh having read through couple of um, you know new stories on that um if you want to apply machine learning and artificial intelligence to your products and make it as a core to your design if you want to design for data if you want to make your um, offerings very intelligent um and be ready uh, future ready then uh, you know um having apis is very important seeking partnerships and co-creation opportunities uh, with you know all the partners and uh, suppliers with even with competitors sometimes um be able to adapt to new and transformative um, technologies like blockchain and iot they are a very different landscape they need their own set of integrations and stuff and finally of course providing that integrated experience to the customer so if you are looking at using platforms um and you know drive tectonic shifts across several areas and build you know collaborative partnerships i think uh, going uh, to uh, going uh, going through the route of building uh, api empowered software ecosystems become very relevant so um what does it mean in investing in an api powered um, ecosystem um basically you know i'm not going to read through everything but uh it 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 means that there is a scalable and effective platform that is available wherein you know leveraging third party apis of the emerging technologies become very very easy and simple of course we cannot build everything for ourselves and that is where you know partnerships become very important um, and especially usage of third party apis and offering our own apis as you know um, available for partnership to suppliers and customers the next one is um, you know looking at complex models looking at newer types of product distribution and of course what sort of partnerships we want to build and what sort of competencies we want to share how do we sort of build you know just enough technological cap um, capabilities and we are not over engineering things we are not over doing things but we are still catering to uh, you know the customer needs and our own revenue generation goals right and lastly how do we keep our focus on the digital innovation strategy um, uh, with all of these new new uh, newer landscape that is opening up for us now if you look at case studies uh, there are many i mean i have picked only a few here uh, but uber uh, you know uber offers a marketplace uh, where you know all drivers and end users are connected today uber also has a eating uh, service the food delivery service as well uber eats um so they have exposed their own services as apis so that can be integrated into other applications it can be you know integrated into other products and solutions um now uber also aggregates and orchestrates other third party services so for example the google map api um you know uber makes use of that i'm sure they are using other payment related apis um for messaging and receipts and other stuff externally as well and this is one example of a very good ecosystem where you know uber is you know being successful while leveraging a very effective partnership with different uh, other providers um this is a very famous uh, set of providers for insurance in europe uh, so i just picked this up uh, because i wanted to talk about how um you know they have this ready for use api based insurance products um and especially with the current pandemic uh, they had to accelerate the digitalization of the industry and the api topic became more and more relevant um i think one of them are um, uh, if i'm not mistaken i think lemonade has become a 100% digital uh, you know insurance shop and i don't think they have a physical presence if i'm not mistaken um apis are also becoming the number one approach for transforming all the insurance carriers across europe i think 50% of insurance they plan already to build their own ecosystem and basically they follow these three steps they first create apis for their own existing interactions within their own insurance company um and they kind of provide that to help with their immediate agents the aggregators that they work very closely with or the financial providers banks etc 
the next step is to start building a bigger ecosystem start building some platforms uh, that looks beyond the existing relationship so if for example uh, this insurance is just providing some sort of uh, common insurance then go tie up with retailers for example who are selling big products and you know offering insurance along with the products so looking at other sort of partnerships looking at a larger ecosystem and thirdly looking at extensive api proliferation uh, to integrate into other people's ecosystem uh, build distribution channels that has multitude of um, offerings that are available and not just go in a unidirectional path um, not uh, for example providing just not health insurance but also looking at providing some other uh, property insurance or you know product insurance everything bundled together and you know make sure that it's a one stop uh, shop for a customer to come looking for their insurance needs so with the three themes this this is a very simple mapping if i would like to um, explain as a takeaway uh, api economy what we talked about it if you focus on api economy you end up with agility you end up with new business models you end up with modernization um, if you're focusing on api driven strategy um, you know data driven insights and improvements are obtained and finally with api empowered ecosystems you can em embrace all the emerging technologies and effective partnerships now how to decide on an api strategy um, you know this is a question i mean of course we can all sit with a blank piece of paper and say hey i have decided now to have an api strategy i would say look at it from uh, you know two different poles one is a business readiness and the other one is an execution readiness um today many r&d companies don't even have uh, a, a, an r&d team which has an api product owner they don't have an exclusive focus on api api is something that comes along with you know other stuff. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, because because we need we need the uh, you have one more minute. Sorry. Yeah, I'll quickly wrap up. So these are some of the questions that you can ask if you know there is business readiness from a strategic alignment standpoint. If it fits in the overall scheme of the business objectives of the company, if API will help you become the key differentiator. Likewise, on the technical side, look at technical complexities. What are the integration points? What are the dependencies on internal external systems? What is the performance scalability levels, etc. now um just quickly to close um, you know if you look at business readiness and if you look at execution readiness here if you know both are low deprioritize it if execution readiness is high but business readiness is low please avoid it uh, we do not want to work on anything that doesn't have business readiness um the only area of focus is here where the business readiness is very high and execution readiness is also um pretty pretty high in cases where business readiness is high but execution is low you can of course come up with a long term plan and proceed with caution so the key tenets you know if you're looking for something easy to use that is simplicity something fast speed and agility collaborative that is integration ready then i think you have to invest in apis um, and um, basically for producers consumers um api management and finally an api gateway for policy enforcement your api strategy will be at the center of this and to look at all these dimensions and expand on each and every one of this will be crucial for you to build your own api strategy and this is the key takeaway uh, accelerate adoption via digital channels monetize your digital assets innovate to fulfill customer needs on demand and uh, for all of this please use api as a key strategic driver so i'm going to close with this uh, the future lies in the humble api guys and this is a uh, uh, this is a screenshot from postman uh, you can see the kind of requests that are coming up in 2019 and how it is going to increase in 2020 thank you thank so you much thank you very much vita uh, yeah great great content i didn't want to interrupt for the questions but we consume all the time uh, thank you uh, very much and again all the slides would be available uh, uh, afterward thank you for being uh, with us Uh, uh, Thank today. you for having me.